So, uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Sitecode User Group India. Today's topic is uh, on order cloud. It is related to the key concepts of order cloud. And uh, today we have uh, Myra Oliver with us. He will be uh, presenting on uh, this topic. Uh, she currently she is working as a backend developer at Ocean, and uh, she is certified on order cloud, CDB, and personalized and site code ten as well as site code nine point three. If you have any questions uh, during the session, please post it to the chat window. We will go through your session, uh, go through your questions at the end of this uh, session. Thank you. Myra, you can start. Hey, hello, guys. Um, thank you, Kushbo. It's, it's great to share this session with you, all of you guys. Um, so the topic will be order cloud key concepts and let's let's start um let me uh well actually kushbu give a, a great presentation of me i will like to add a couple more details to get to the, give you more details about me i am from ecuador i am myra uh, i have experience on .net Azure services and currently working on my Sitecore specialization. I started on Sitecore two, almost two years ago and it's been an exciting journey since, since then. So, and before to continue, I would like to know about you guys. I hope uh, at some point we will not know each other better, but for now, I would like to know how much you know about Order Cloud. How, how related are you with Sitecore Order Cloud? Please, if you have a a your phone uh, uh, close, uh, you can scan the co the QR code and share your experience. So, because this session uh, will be about our cloud key concepts and authentication workshop, um, but it will be a beginner talk. Uh, so, I'm expecting to continue sharing knowledge on our cloud on a deeper level of the future. So we have one the uh, one of uh, on, of of on our audience that um, get brave and uh, we know now that we are beginners. So we are good. We are good. Uh, let's see. Maybe we can check later this, and we will continue. We will start. Our agenda for today will be in an introduction that will let us know the main characteristics of. of or the cloud, then we will check products, catalogs, and categories, orders, and finally we will check uh, authentication with a quick workshop. So about order cloud, it's good to know, it's great to know because it is a uh, a pretty extensive platform for a marketplace uh, solution. Sitecore has several game changer characteristics uh, because it supports several business models such as B2B, B2C, B2B2C. Um, and it is great because um, you will, uh, well, our client will call the start as a B2B, B2C solution as a B2C model, but it will uh, be able to quickly uh, move to B2B or B2, B2C. So it's great right because it will not take, uh, you will, from the uh, starting solution that you, you create, you could uh, switch easily to another or a complex solution. Uh, also, it is designed for integration because it has extensible and filterable properties. It, uh, it, it provides rules engine and webhooks to webhooks and integration events for handling uh, integration with other platforms. Also, it is uh, or the cloud uses uh, a lot of conventions that make it easier to integrate. Sitecore or the cloud with other platforms or, or with other services that our client or, or, or business needs. So, for example, it uses SSL, JSON as, a, uh, as part of the data transportation, a data format based on uh, ISO 86001. It uses OAuth as well and writable unique IDs and HTTP methods and error handling. These are 
uh, the main characteristics of Cycle or the cloud. As we mentioned, we have webhooks. This is uh, really interesting because we uh, we have prehooks and posthooks. Using webhooks, you, uh, webhooks will only be triggered by order cloud endpoint that write to the database. The request body uh, sent to the order cloud endpoint uh, will be passed along to the webhooks that use it. For example, uh, uh, prehooks we will use for validate, uh, validations, uh, incoming requests, such as addresses being written or updated to the database. And postcodes uh, will, will be ideal for replicating state changes to another database. So this, uh, as I mentioned, will be great for integrating our order cloud platform with other services and platforms that we have on, on our solution. In order cloud, I uh, was thinking on all of the stages of our solution. So we have uh, a different environments. We have production, staging, and sandbox. Production will be reserved for only for live apps with real buyers and real transactions. So nothing else will be there than real the real data. Staging. Uh, if you have live apps deployed to production and want to place a test code changes, or if you want to test or release API features against existing uh, existing code, this will be the, the place where to do it. Because every Sunday on at 3 a.m. UTC, uh, part of the data from production is moved, is copied to staging to let us do this this test. Um, then we have the sandbox. Uh, the sandbox will be the portal that we will be using for our, our workshop. And if you build an app, this is the place where you start on, because is uh, here we, you will have all the fake data that in but all the functionalities from production to let you try and build your solution. Let's continue with. Uh, now you you will you will see that on security cloud you have parties and entities parties will be uh will refer to a user or something that a user belongs to and then and an entity will be everything else for example the products the catalogs the categories will be um entities related that are related to to the user and the assignments are the relationships between parties and entities. And assignments uh, must be explicit, must be cascade down, and uh, they are many to many. And they are such important part of, of order cloud because without an assignment, you will not, you will have parties and entities that you, that will be not useful because you will not have a way to to communicate between them. Next part of the, uh, well, on our parties, we will find the marketplace, the buyers uh, organization, the supplier organization. Supplier will be option, optional, and we have users and user groups. So a marketplace owner can see and control everything in the entire marketplace. The buyer will represent the real world entities who view products in the marketplace. So they create orders, they add services requests to be fulfilled by the suppliers of the or the marketplace owner. Um, the suppliers, uh, these are optional and, the, and this organization is optional because uh, as we mentioned before, um, you, you could be on a B2C um, business model where you will only have buyers in marketplace. Uh, we will not have suppliers. So suppliers uh, um, provide, they get in charge of the products, the product distribution for the marketplace or owner. The user is the person who can access to the application. So they, the user will be part of the marketplace of the buyer of, or of the supplier. And they can be, they can be part of any of these organizations and they can be arranged on user groups. The user groups are great to share a common persona. So we will be able to give a security profiles, um, roles and 
rights to access to the data by user groups and then apply to the to a specific users. Now we will check about products. Um, well, we will. I think we have. Uh, then we will review the the questions. Uh, here we have products. Products are the the represent the price or price goods or services that we are selling on our marketplace. And we will notice that we have uh, four characteristics. Uh, well, four. Uh, characteristics inside of products. We have attributes, specs, variants, and suppliers. Attributes are the, sim the most simple characteristics of the product. They could be color, material, size, but they are they will be kind of the, uh, just a description. And price will not part uh, of an attribute um, will not uh, will not be an attribute. We will check uh, later that price will be take place when we use price schedules. And also we have specs and variants. Specs uh, to get these concepts, specs will refer to represent a combination of options that marketplace offer of their products. For example, if you sell uh, t-shirts, you will have uh, you will have the chance of select the color and size of the t-shirt. And variants will be a specific combination. One, once uh, on our marketplace, we have uh, t-shirts with different size with different colors. And once we select one of them, uh, one specific color and size, then it becomes a product variant. So that will be a product, a product variant, a specific number tied to a combination of specs of a product. Uh, the product suppliers will get will well a, a product can be associated to multiple suppliers so if you have uh suppliers that do the same product you will be able to uh, to tie that information in your uh order cloud uh, platform uh, uh, about we will not need to know uh, more details about product specs because product specs, uh, as, as we mentioned, are the combinations of product, uh, are combinations of product offered by the marketplace. And we have three types of uh, product specs. We have open text spec, options spec, and variant. Open text uh, will, uh, will be a, a multi-line uh, um, Feel to to be filled by the by the by the buyer, and here uh, the buyer can specify different uh, the descriptions for the product that it that he or she needs. The option spec is a is the it will give us the ability to modify a product configuration on a limited choices. For example, you will have four uh, options of a certain certain product and the variant spec is will have will we will have more variant we will have more options for example option specs uh, that intends to split a product across each spec option that, to create a unique variant product per option for example buying as i told you buying a t-shirt will let us uh, select the color the size even the fabric for example and that will give us a wide uh, word of options. Then we have the catalog and categories. Uh, these are uh, containers of products and categories will be optional, but they must stay with a catalog. So marketplace owners sell products to buyers through one or more catalogs. There can be several default catalogs in a marketplace, but they will be only one default catalog for each buyer. Categories otherwise will group and place content for a specific audience. Also, they build categories and subcategories to define the product hi hierarchy in a marketplace. So this will be good to organize our products and even we will see not uh, we will see about product visibility. This catalogs and categories will be key concepts uh, inside of the product visibility when we want to show a certain group of users uh, a, a, a specific a specific products and to 
that we would want to show to other users and buyers, I mean. Here we have the product schedule. As I, I told you before, the product, the, I mean, the price schedule. Uh, I say the product. So the price schedule is the way we will uh, attach a price, price to our product. Um, this gives us the possibility to sell the same product across multiple channels on different uh, a different price. This is as well critical for product visibility, and we will check later uh, some key points about that. And give us the flexibility to build relations between products, users, and, pre and price schedules. Uh, for example, we will have here on in price schedule, we will have price break, default price break schedule, and price markups. The price break uh, is the price corresponding to the quantity ordered. For example, one t-shirt at $20, uh, 20 bucks, but up uh, but more than 10 and up to 100 will be uh, 50 bucks. So these are the this this is what we use for the price uh, price break. The default price schedule is the property is the simple simplest way for a business to tie a product directly to a price schedule, but it's just a default because once we find a relationship with a price schedule, we will have the we will get priority of that price schedule. But uh, is the recommended practice to add a default price schedule for every product that we add on our marketplace. Price mar markups are price adjustments to the product uh, total price based on a specific product uh, specs or variants. For example, a basic laptop at certain price, but upgrading the product is uh, it's possible. So we can add more uh, more memory, more uh, uh, SDD cap uh, capacity. So. Here we will have a, as part of mar price markups, we will have that we have no markup, which is a default price markup option, uh, and it means that the price will maintain at the same amount of uh, at the same price. Then we have amount per quantity uh, as another option of price markups, and the amount per quantity will update the product unit price with an amount uh, when we select the total amount equals to the uh, updated price then we multiply it by the quantity of the product and the amount total will be another price markup that here we will the amount total means that Psycho or the cloud without a fixed uh, amount to the total product price uh, regardless of the product quantity and the percentage the product unit price increased by the defined value as a percentage um, this is uh, we, we see that we have many options and this is part of the capabilities of the Cycle or the cloud because it's pretty extensible and covers uh, almost all the I think all the scenarios that we can get on our marketplace solution. Uh, here's what I mentioned you about product visibility because this is uh, what offers uh, or the cloud the ability to show to a client a certain promotion on a, of a product on at certain uh, price and to another. Uh, client to another buyer, uh, another uh, catalog or, or group of products at certain a uh, certain price. So it is recommended for this, for product visibility, it is recommended to assign a product default price as a schedule, as I told you. And a product without a price schedule assigned is visible, but not purchasable to buyers. Also, the catalog assignment, um, as we mentioned before the assignments are crucial on this uh, per order cloud uh, uh, logic. So a catalog assignment is applied only to the entire buyer organization, but the catalog uh, category assignment could be applied to the entire buyer organization or to a buyer user group. And also 
the category, the visibility of a category assignment and the visibility, uh, the visibility of the products of a category assignment can have uh, true, false, and null as, as possible values. And well, true, false will be, uh, uh, we will get the concept by itself, but null will means that it will inherit the, uh, the value from the parent. This on product visibility, um, then we will have product facets. Product facets uh, are great because it led us to filter uh, products by extended properties. So at the end, we will see uh, we'll see where to add extended properties on uh, product uh, later. Um, but we will have these extended properties will lead us to uh, add a, a facets to 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 the product to be searched to be searched so on a facet we have the facet id the facet name the xp pad the xp pad will be pretty important because it have the this is the way to match the experience oh god the experience um um the extended property with the with the facet and they will have the list order and the minimum account. And okay, so let's continue. Give me give me a second. So let's continue. Sorry for that. Uh, let's continue with with orders. So we now we have order. We have now that we have products. We will have orders as well. Um, orders will be uh, represent the business transaction between different parties. Collection of of line items. We will check line uh, the definition of line items later today. Uh, payment methods, ta uh, tasks, and shipping information. So uh, inside of order directions, we have uh, we have the concept of incoming and outgoing outgoing directions. Um, give me give me a second. My laptop is dying. Um, I will be back really quick please. Sure. internet but not my my charger so let's continue um are there, are there about orders direction and status directions uh, when you search for uh, for a certain order you will you could do it from the perspective of a wire uh npo which which is a marketplace owner and from the supplier so it will depend on which perspective are you uh, pointing on, uh, looking for? But it could be coming, outgoing, and all. All will be the easier, way, easier way to get all the orders. But for sure, it will be uh, less uh, detailed um, uh, because you will get it, everything, every order incoming or going. Or going. So, for example, if you are a buyer and you're if you're an MPO first, so if you're an um, MPO, you're looking for the your Maida? buyer set. Hello. Oh, okay. There. Yeah. Now yes. you can hear me. Okay. Thanks. Um, as I was saying, you, if you are an MPO and you are looking for the orders, orders that you have to fulfill, then you will have to look for the orders incoming. 
because it will be from the buyer that I, are incoming to you. And if you are looking for, if you have a supplier and you're looking for the orders that were fulfilled or details of the orders that were fulfilled for your suppliers, you will have to look for outgoing orders. So this is good when we, we will use, we will not uh, check on detail the API client today, but this will be useful when you are working with the API client and you want to uh, get a detail of your orders. Okay, let's continue. Hope you don't, uh, you can hear me good now. Yes, yeah, we can hear Okay. You. So, um, here also as well as the as the directions we will have status of the orders we'll have unsubmitted open awaiting for approval decline <clears throat> completed cancelled and abandoned order so one thing to remark here is that all order cloud give us give you the possibility to uh to let a order on awaiting for approval on, on approval state. So then we, you can approve, approve it or decline it. And another thing about this is that abandon uh, cancel order will be like an archive uh, order. You will not, once you are cancel one, you will not able to modify a, anything of the order, any, any aspect of, of the order. Then I think uh, submitted is like a, a card that is open that is not already that is not check out or oh, an open order is uh, an order that we already check out but it's not fulfilled yet and the completed is the one that will be uh, will be already fulfilled by the supplier or by the marketplace owner and a cycle of the cloud with getting charge of changing this state once the supplier of the marketplace owner uh, fulfilled the order, uh, it will change change to completed uh, by, by its own. Um, we are close to all this theory. Now, uh, it's close to the end of this, uh, this theory. Uh, I, I told you we will check line items because uh, this is important to know. A line item represents a single line on an order. An order needs to be at least, and it's at least one single line item to be submitted. You you will check, uh, you will see that uh, an order will be submitted almost uh, empty with empty data, but you will need a single line item to to submit an order to create an order, and uh, of course, uh, one or more line items will compose a a order. Abandon order cleanup. Uh, for this is is um, order cloud is great to I mean is I is good relation uh, to understand is like a, a shopping cart uh, side. Uh, a, like Amazon, and this uh, is a great characteristic of, of order cloud because order cloud gets in charge of abandoned order uh, cleanup. For example, we we'll, we will see that we have anonymous users and profile users, and I will give you a little bit more details on anonymous users. But for example, anonymous users um, with with the line items, a card that has line items, will uh, the card will la last for seven days. A profile user that has uh, items on your on its card, on it it will last for ninety days uh, from the last update. And for all the users anonymous or profiled that don't have line items in the card their retention policy for the card will be 24 hours. So it will be cleaned up by order cloud. We don't have to take care of that. It's uh, a great characteristic. And about orders, uh, we will make concern about who can create orders. So marketplace owners, suppliers, buyers assigned as full 
access order admin or shopper roles can create a new order inside Color Cloud by calling the post uh, create an, a new order. How we can update an order? We will use a, a a patch call to the orders and we will have to modify, we will um, modify the direction of uh, or the or the line items, uh, but but we will have to identify it by order ID. And what is the minimum condition to submit an order? As I mentioned it before, you will have to at least have a one line item. Uh, to cancel in to cancel an order, um, you will put it to close and you will lock it to any other modification as well. Um, here we will check all. Oh, here we will check about promotion expressions, and I will. Uh, I wish I could explain this on um, on a long. I mean, in more detail. Uh, this is extensive, uh, but key points about this is that target promotions will let a buyer to take advantage of the discount offerings. Um, and it's based on roles engine, uh, eligible expression and, and value expression. Um, I'm, uh, we, will, we will need to check this more in detail because this even we will we could give uh, make some exercise about this because it's, re, it's pretty it's pretty useful. Then in almost the last uh, the the last part of this is the payment types. Uh, as I I mentioned before, Sacred uh, Cloud was thinking on on almost every scenario. So give us many possibilities. Uh, these uh, payment types are part of this. For example, we have credit cards, spending accounts, and purchase orders. I think we are related to credit cards. Uh, for example, if this these payments methods can be associated with individual shoppers to user groups or buyer organizations uh, to use as part of the purchasing. Also supports multiple uh, payments in various types as, as we, we are checking. For example, spending accounts represent the corporate the corporate cash rewards lo uh, loyalty programs or gift cards. This is what spending accounts are useful. They can hold the balance and they can be assigned to users by admins. They, uh, they is good. Is these spending accounts are great because you could uh, allow a user to, to uh, not uh, to use just the balance of the of a spending account, but also if you uh, set to true a, a, a certain uh, value, you will be able to use more than you balance. So then you will create a negative balance, but this is uh, all the possibilities that, that give you on a spending accounts. And also purchase orders are the common payment method in B2B commerce. So typically they are, a predetermined by predetermined relationship in such a, a business model, and a payment is a uh, is invoiced later. So because there is not cycle or cloud validation on this type of payment, purchase orders can be used to model any other kind of payments that don't feed uh, nearly into credit cards or spending accounts. So this is the open open box for uh, when it, it becomes a, when we need to uh, um, set a, a checkout on our business. Then we are, we will, now we will enter on into the, the authentication part. Um, for this, we will have security profiles. Security clouds give us the chance to use uh, uh, reader roles, admin roles, shopper role, me roles, which will be more detailed. Um, I mean, they will handle uh, a user specific information, uh, access to, to a user information. And we, also we will have custom roles and uh, which will do not grant access to the any API functionality. However, they will, they can, 
use them to control access to the API to app specific features. And here we will have the authentication workflows. We didn't check uh, API client uh, on detail, but authentication workflows will be useful to access to, uh, the, to the API. Uh, because API client is uh, pretty extensive. Uh, there are several calls and in, in information to handle there. So uh, for authentication workflows, we will have five authentication workflows and one more that is signing. So we will check here the five first ones because signing is a single sign-on will be a, a third-party authentication. So we don't, uh, uh, apart from the setup, we will not have uh, that much to do there. Um, then we will have a password workflow client credentials workflow, refresh, refresh workflow, elevated password flow, and the anonymous shopping. So give me, let me give you more details on anonymous, uh, about anonymous user. Uh, um, Order Cloud lets you to uh, even catch anonymous users. Uh, it's great because uh, sometimes it's annoying to uh, have to have a profile on a certain site to be able to purchase because probably uh, you don't do it that often. So with anonymous shopping, you can catch a, uh, a user that is browsing on your site and decide to uh, buy something really quick. It, he or she can do it by anonymous shopping. The anonymous shopping will work, uh, I mean, then you will need to uh, get anonymous profile and no use uh, anonymous user and profile user. But um, a user once purchased a, on your site will become a profile user. The user will not have to get a profile. It will not have to give other information that needed. For example, the address where the 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 order will be delivered, but Order Cloud with, uh, will profile uh, this this user by it could be by email by any information that uh, that the user provides. The user will will be profiled. So at some point it will become a profile user, but uh, the user will not uh, the buyer will not have to to do that annoying uh, process of setting up a profile inside the site. So here we will have this authentication workflow will let us to access to a different uh, sections of the API data, the, the site data. We will check on our workshop um, really quick the password workflow and the elevated password flow. We will check what we need to set up to get a token to, uh, to access to the API client by these two workflows. And la the last thing is, is, this is great to mention. I mean, these, these, car these values are, uh, these are the options that we can get on error handling. And this is useful. They are intuitive by itself. So invalid username or password uh, give us the, the idea of what it means. But this is useful because when we, are debugging or we are uh, solving issues inside the platform, uh, it's great to know that we have the tools to do it. So we have error handling and we have HTTP uh, status code. So this will help us to, to address any kind of issues that we have. And uh, well, we will start our presentation here a little bit to continue with the workshop and we will check what we can do, a uh, little bit of what we, what we can do uh, inside of this side of the portal. Give me a second and I will share my screen, uh, the, the site, Order Cloud. Okay, well, uh, let's start for this. But if all of us, uh, I mean, we, we could, uh, I could sign in with my, my company, um, uh, email because uh, we are partners, but we could sign in. Uh, everybody, everybody can sign in to this, this 
uh, this portal. So we you can access by order cloud that IO. Here we will have um, the portal. We will have dashboard, marketplaces, teams, the API console, and the settings. So for this, we will go to. I think we can create uh, because this will uh, be already done. We can create a new marketplace, and as I mentioned, you these are this is the core organization of our of our solution. We can select us east and i think we have to do it almost really quick because we are we are we don't have that much time okay let's see sandbox we will see that the environment is the sandbox by default we don't have access yet to a staging or a production one and let's see this is uh so, so in marketplace okay let's see in so in marketplace so here we have our for example to communicate with our with our api server uh, once we create the the, the marketplace it gives us the the URL that we must use. And this we will use on our Postman application. So here I have a token, a, a, a call prepared, but we will change this to call it, which is that IO. Oh, no from here and we will see um, how it works at least for getting a token so what we will need here is to create a buyer organization and at least one user organization um, let's see let's go to the dashboard and we will select this and go to api here we'll, you will see that for example here is selected here you can select the marketplace so it was selected uh there the cloud demo at first now i want so sign in and we see that we don't have a a a api client and we will create this as well we will need a api client and this is something uh on workflows, once we set this client secret, we will need to um, as well set the client secret on every call to the to get a token. So we will not set this yet, and we will check later this client secret. Then we will have this uh, the refresh token. I will show you also one thing little really quick. Then we will have to add. It's not recommended but we'll for demo purposes we will select allow all suppliers and all buyers this uh, needs to be more mindful because we you should not add this that much of this uh, access on a one api client so let's create it and we will see that this is what we need on our call uh, here we have the body and we have that for password workflow we will have a run type that is password the client id that we need is the one that i just copied and it was not copied there we have and here we here this scope will be the list of the roles that you are looking for you can have his shopper me admin uh, could be uh, admin reader but we will try with shopper and the password uh, will be this is what i why i told you we will need a user because we will access from the perspective of this user we don't have it so we will have errors here for sure let me show you for example send um, oh, um, if we have uh, this is 45 method not allowed. This is because we need to do a post call. 
to get a token. Then we will have, you see invalid username and password, and, but this is not even invalid. This is because we don't have a user. So let's create a buyer. Here we will have that we, we will see that we don't have any buyer. If we select post, create a new buyer, we will have. Here I will put buyer as ID, but of course this will be unique. For now it will be unique, but if you have a larger uh, business, they will be, it could be different. Then it, this is the first buyer. And this is all what we need. We'll see something later that we will have issues with. Send and we have create this buyer. And now this is a buyer organization. So now we need to create a user inside of, of our buyer organization. So here we have to use our buyer ID, which was pretty easy. Uh, the buyer user group that we don't have, this is optional and we can create a buyer. If we have here, so, oh, this, uh, we have to change to post. And uh, then buyer as our ID, the request, the username here will have um, user and the password will be password. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, first name, first user. And the email will be test, arrow, uh, add, test.com. Just for testing purposes. Okay, here we have our buyer. And you see the ID of this buyer was set up by the portal. So we will have to, um, well, we will have to copy it for later. Uh, let me copy it here. Okay. So now we can call here from the perspective of this user. It was user, had uh, a username, and the password was password one and two five. And we have a scope, a scope as shopper, and then we can send it. So here is the thing that I will, I mentioned you that it will happen. Uh, the organization is not active. So every time you create something on on portal uh, on order cloud, you will have to you will have to active a, any any entity or, or party. So let's here do a patch and select the buyer ID buyer. And then the request, uh, here we have to set it as an active active buyer. Let's send it, uh, it was successful. Now we have a, a active active buyer. Let's say what, let's see what it says now. Okay, so we overcome the uh, unactive organization, but now we have that the user is unactive as well. So let's, change this as well. So that's why I wanted to keep this user ID because we didn't create a user, uh, the ID, a easy ID for the user. And let's change it for a patch. The, so the buyer ID will be buyer. The user ID will be this. And then we will send it as active. And it's supposed to work. Send it. Okay, here we go. Now it is active. And if we check, oh, if we check here, we will see that finally we will overcome this uh, these steps of setting as active organization and user, and we will have this this token. This token, if we go to our site we will check the information that provides. Um, so let's see here. And we will have that we have a user. We will have the user information, the type that is a buyer. Here we could check that 
this will expire on November 20, 24 in one minute, uh, I think. And, and we will see where it comes. So here we have all the details. If we add more, if we are more, more um, roles, we will have more information as well. So this uh, I wanted to show you. And also, if we try the, the part that I told you about secret client, if we check the secret client, uh, let me add, add it here, security, API clients. So once we add a secret client to a, or a marketplace, we will have to add this information on every call. So let's see here. And short client secret. Well, we could generate a random one, but this will be our key for today. And also, let me show you something. For example, you see here the refresh token is null. We will change this refresh token. You will have to add a time for this refresh token uh, in order to get a refresh token on your call. So let's say 600 minutes, save changes. And we will see that we'll, first our call will fail because we don't have the secret client. So let's see. Now we have an invalid client. Then we will have to add secret client and add this here and send it. And it's not working. Let me see. Client secret is the name. It's not secret client, it's client secret. And then send it. And now we recover our token. And also we will have that we have a refresh token to uh, not being no, to avoid the need of uh, authenticating ourselves every time. So here is what um, we can check. Uh, this portal is pretty extensive. I wish we could check this more in detail. Even uh, even I continue learning about this, but hopefully this will be this was useful for you to to learn a, uh, a bit of, of order cloud. Also, let me, let me get back to our presentation and see. Okay, so this is the end of the, we are kind of uh, are just on time. Uh, this is the end of this presentation. Hope it was help, helpful for you to know uh, a bit more of order cloud. I thank you so much for all your or your time. Uh, if you want to scan uh, to scan my QR code of LinkedIn, uh, let's stay connected, please. And I think Kushbo, we can uh, continue with with the QR QI session. I have. I think we have a couple minutes to do it. Yep. Sure. So. We have one question so far, and it is from Abhishek. So the question is, are variant and variant uh, specs two separate entities? Is variant a subcategory within specs? Yeah, they are separate separate entities, but it's not a subcategory. Uh, it's like a class, like the spec is the class and the variant is the object. So once we select a certain combination of specs, then it becomes a variant. That was. Do we have more questions or chat? There is no question as of <laughs> now in okay. chat window. Yeah, if you have any question, you can. Oh, no, I, actually, maybe we can. Uh, I wanted to ask you guys a couple of questions. Uh, so uh, I would like as feedback for sure, because um, uh, I am brand new on this, but uh, we can get better every time. I would like to know if you want to scan the 
scan the code and let me know how useful was this talk to you uh if you learned something if i could give you some hints on or the cloud uh please let me know and also um i wish to know if you what topics are you interested in i i know that this talk was pretty theoretical and um a little bit if we want to check more on details on detail the the functionality of the of the portal uh we will have we will need more time uh and more even we could get more expertise on it but definitely we could we could check it later um also if you can give a give me some ideas of what is so that's what i was thinking uh, i was talking uh what topics are you inst interested in because uh we were missing uh, we were missing order fulfillment uh inventory uh promotions i wish i could uh, explain uh on a better on a deeper way promotions because they are really interesting so they are some topics that are are missing here but as i told you it was a, a beginner beginner talk so those are my questions for you guys um i it's all what i have to you and uh again hope it was useful yeah let me know Kushbo. sure uh Maida, there is one more question uh do you find a trial account good enough to make purchase decisions yeah definitely it, it has uh it has all the functionality so it's good to to do a trial it, it you will see when you check the apa client it's a wide world on of options but it's good enough to to do it actually it, it has all the functionality because from from the sandbox you will have to move to staging and production So I think that's it. Uh, so thank you, Myra, for sharing your knowledge with us. It was uh, definitely a good start uh, for us to start learning the order cloud. And uh, definitely we can uh, organize other sessions on um, related to the advanced topic of order cloud and so with the interest of people. So, yep. That's all from my side and thank you again and thank you all for uh, joining us today. Thank you so much, Kushba. Thank you for the, uh, for this great organization and thank you guys. I, it was great to, to talk to you. See ya. See you. Thank you all. Bye.